Hello, welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast, where we go through the Mass readings. Today's Mass readings come from, well, obviously today, but uh, today is April 3rd, 2019. And so the first reading we're going to look at is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 49, verses 8 through 15, which say, Thus says the Lord, At the favorable time I will answer you, on the day of salvation I will help you. I have formed you and have appointed you as covenant of the people. I will restore the land and assign you the estates that that lie waste. I will say to the prisoners, come out. To those who are in darkness, show yourselves. On every roadway they will will graze, and each bare height shall be their pasture. They will never hunger or thirst. Scorching wind and sun shall never plague them. For he who pities them will lead them and guide them to springs of water. I will make a highway of all the mountains, and the high roads shall be banked up. Some are on their way from afar, others from the north and the west, others from the land of Sinem. Shout for joy, you heavens, exalt you earth. You mountains, break into happy cries, for the Lord consoles his people and takes pity on those who are afflicted. For Zion was saying, the Lord has abandoned me, the Lord has forgotten me. Does a woman forget her her baby at the breast, or fail to cherish the son of her womb? Yet, even if these forget, I will never forget you. The responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 144. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who fall and raises all who are bowed down. The Lord is just in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. Today's Gospel reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 17 through 30. Jesus said to the Jews, My father goes on working, and so do I. But that only made them even more intent on killing him, because, not content with breaking the Sabbath, he spoke of God as his own father, and so made himself God's equal. To this accusation, Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, the Son can do nothing by himself, and he can do nothing, he can, my my apologies, he can do only what he sees the Father doing, and whatever the Father does, the Son does too. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything he does himself, and he will show even greater things than these, works that will astonish you. Thus, as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son gives life to anyone he chooses. For the Father judges no one. He has entrusted all judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son as they honor the Father. Whoever refuses honor to the Son refuses honor to the Father who sent him. I tell you most solemnly, Whoever listens to my words and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life. Without being brought to judgment, he has passed from death to life. I tell you most solemnly, the hour will come, in fact is already here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and all who hear it will live. For the Father, who is the source of life, has made the Son the source of life. And because he is the Son of Man, has appointed him supreme judge. Do not be surprised by this. For the hour is coming when the dead will leave their graves at the sound of his voice. Those who did good will rise again to life, and those who did evil to to condemnation. I can do nothing by myself. I can only judge as I am told to judge, and my judging is just, because my aim is to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So a lot to go over in today's readings. Uh, First and foremost, in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, this takes place again, just like yesterday's reading, at the end of the Babylonian exile. Um, So the the Jewish people were in captivity. Um, They were away from their homeland. And basically they forgot that, they thought that God had just abandoned them because of their sin. And God tells the prophet Isaiah, you know, that's not the case. Uh, the time is coming 
where I will answer your pleas and will take you out of this desert, if you will. He said, I've not abandoned you. Like a mother, I will never forget you. Um, and what's what's even, signi- even significant here is the prophet says, well, the Lord says through Isaiah, some are on their way from afar, others from the north and the west, the meaning not only for the Jewish people, but for the Gentiles as well. This is very significant, because without that, you and I would be excluded, you know. Um, so it's very significant there. So God has not abandoned his people. He always answers. Um, sometimes, just like the book of Hebrews says, there's some maybe some discipline that happens. It doesn't mean he doesn't love us. If he doesn't love us, he wouldn't discipline us. That's kind of what the Jewish people were going through at that point. But through Christ, which we see in today's gospel reading, we have new life. He's leading us from that desert into this promised land, if you will, where if we listen, we believe in him, like Jesus says, we have eternal life. And in today's gospel reading, it's a statement of divinity of Jesus to his naysayers. And the gospel says that they wanted to kill him because he it was a statement of divinity. He knew what he was talking about. They knew what he meant. It was a statement of divinity. He's saying, look, I healed this man on the Sabbath, which was yesterday's gospel reading. This takes place right after this. But God could do what he wants. God can heal on the Sabbath. He could judge on the Sabbath. Here I am. I am healing on the Sabbath. And they're like, whoa, what, what's going on? This guy's insane. Let's kill him. It's a statement of divinity. He knew what he was wanting to do. And here he kind of gives us a kind of a detailed explanation of his relationship with the Father. So we have a couple aspects going on here. Um, some people use one of these verses in here to say that you know Jesus was a created being. You know, they kind of fall into Arianism. Jehovah's Witnesses use this a lot, unfortunately. But here Jesus says his power comes from the Father, and he judges. Only God can judge. And God is always eternal. The three persons of the Trinity, though they may be, they may, though they may have some distinction of roles, they are, in fact, equals. Okay, but here, remember, Jesus is on Earth in His human form. Here, He's kind of He's claiming this sonship. He's claiming this sonship here, and He's saying that the power of Yahweh, of God, of the, well, the Father is given to him. Well, this is a very important distinction. He may be less than the Father in his humanity, which is kind of what he's hinting at here, but he's equal to the Father in his divinity because each person of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, are God. They're the same substance. This was dealt with at Nicaea. And here Jesus is telling his listeners here that those listeners will transfer from death to life. This is a, um, sorry, I got my commentary here, which has some decent notes. I'm not reading it verbatim or anything, but I think it's important. I think it's a good distinction here. So as believers in Christ, we are rescued from the curse of Adam. We're rescued from our original sin through baptism, through the sacraments, which Jesus is dispensing the grace of the Trinity onto us, we are we are given into that new life. We are reinstated, if you will, into the family of God, especially in the sacrament of baptism. We're initiated into the family of God, and through the sacraments that Jesus has established, just gives us grace um, to strengthen us in that divine life. And so the Father, as Jesus is saying here, is that first link to the supernatural life. He's the first link because the Father created. The Father created heavens and the earth, as we see in the book of Exodus. Okay? The Trinity and 
everything has passed on through the Son, the Holy Spirit, all are God, all have always existed, all are eternal. But Jesus gives life. It has been given. Jesus' only son through relation, as Thomas Aquinas says. And so the Father gives this, flows through the Son, the power to judge, the power to give life, to give life in his name. The Son is given absolute sovereignty over life and death. So that's why he's the eternal judge. Through this new life, as the Apostles' Creed says, as Jesus says in this gospel, we can be resurrected into new life. So there's a lot more we can actually cover in today's in today's readings. Uh, there is so much here to dive to dive into, but we're just scratching the surface here, and we are out of time in all actuality. But um, I thank you guys for listening to. to today's show. Delve into these readings a little more. There's so much depth, especially when it comes to the Trinity. We have just scratched the surface on the depth here. So, Trinity, they're not three gods, not triplex. All are God. All are the same essence. But we see this flow of power through these great through this great concept we call the Trinity. And Jesus hints at it here in today's Gospel reading. And those who believe come to new life in his name. So believe. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Have a great day. God bless you.